In this video, we're working on a 1998 through 2010 Volkswagen Beetle. We're going to be replacing the front hub and bearing located behind the wheel. You should have a little cap right here. You want to pop that off. You can use the straight blade screwdriver, pop that off. This vehicle doesn't have that. Then you want to go grab that hook right in the hole right there and just pull it straight out. It's just clipped on right in the middle there. It pops right off. Now you can access the lug nuts. Take the wheel lock key, find which one is the wheel lock. Using a 17 millimeter socket, take that out. And go around, take the other lug nuts off. Before we take the last one off, I'm just gonna hold the wheel on so it doesn't fall. Take that off. And then take the wheel off. We're gonna take the axle nut off, use a 30 millimeter socket. It needs to be a 12 point. Take that off. You wanna make sure you separate the axle from the hub. You can try pushing it. Just gonna take a punch and a hammer. Try to separate the axle from the hub. Just want to make sure it moves. There we go. Now we're going to take these three bolts out using a 13 millimeter socket. And there's this little plate on top that holds the nuts. Take that off. Now I'm going to take these caps off for the caliper screws or slide pins. Just use a straight blade screwdriver or a pocket screwdriver. Pop those out. Using a seven millimeter hex socket, take those two slide pins out. and grab the caliper, slide it off the bracket, and just using a brake caliper hanger, attach it to the coil spring. And out of the way. Now using a Phillips head screwdriver, take this screw out. If it's stuck in there pretty good, you can use an impact driver. Take that out and then grab the rotor, slide it off. If it is stuck on there, you can take a hammer and just tap in those areas. We're gonna take the bottom bolt out for the sway bar link using a 16 millimeter socket. And you can slide this up out of the way. Now slide the axle out. You can slide the, the ball joint off the lower control arm and just slide the axle out of the way. Now we're gonna use a puller. We need to pull the hub out this way, so you need a puller that's gonna sit on the face of the knuckle right there. And then on the back side, this has to be smaller so that the hub will come out. Just tighten this on the end. As I tighten this up, it's gonna pull the hub that way. Now I'll just tighten this down. goes just be careful you don't want it to fall on you and it slides right out using some snap ring pliers we're going to take this snap ring out just line that up squeeze just be careful you don't want it to go flying wiggle it back and forth and slide it out now I'm going to use the same puller but on the back side I'm going to use a cup that's a little bit bigger so that it pushes the bearing straight through so that'll be on the back side Line this up again, put that on. And 
and we'll do the same. We'll just tighten this up, and it's going to pull the bearing through. There's the bearing. I'm just going to take a wire brush and just clean any of the rust areas just around the lip. Don't worry about too far in there. Now I take the bearing, you can slide that in position. We're going to use a installer. You want to find some adapters that fit right on the outside of the bearing, as close as possible, but it needs to be slightly smaller than the bearing. So we'll use this adapter as we tighten it up. It's going to pull the bearing right in. I'm going to tighten this in, tighten it down, and just make sure the bearing goes in straight. It looks like it's going straight. to a point where it bottoms out and it feels snug, just go a little bit further and then back off. And that should be all the way down. And remove the tool, slide it up. Now I take the new snap ring, line that up. Make sure it locks in place all the way around. If it doesn't go all the way in, then you may have to push the bearing in a little further. When we go to put the hub on, what we need to do is support the back side of the bearing because we don't want the bearing to push through. So you're gonna have to find something small enough that it just covers just this part of the bearing, the center part. So find something that's like that size and we're gonna put that on the back side and we're gonna pull it through the same way we just pulled the bearing in. This will go on the outside like this. Slide in there. And put the cup on the inside. And get this started. and then you'll feel it tighten up. Just go a little bit more and then loosen it up. And separate the tool. And slide it out. Now line the axle up. And slide that through the wheel bearing or the hub. And you can line the ball joint up as well, the control arm. you can get the nut on. Now you want to put the bolts, ball joint bolts in. You want to replace these bolts when you're doing this job. Just 
snug those up first. Now I'm going to torque these to 15 foot pounds and then you want to go an additional 90 degrees. Now I'll lower the sway bar link and put the bolt on, get that started. And I'm going to torque this bolt to 33 foot-pounds. Just going to spray some anti-seize on here. Just a little bit. Now we're going to put the rotor on. Make sure the hole lines up with the threaded hole right there. And then you can put the screw in. Get that started. And you just want to snug it down, not too tight. Just snug, that's fine. Now I take the caliper, take the caliper off the bracket. And line this up. It's going to go in the bottom first. And then take the pins. We're just going to put some caliper grease on these. You can wipe them down if they're dirty. And now I'm going to torque these to 21 foot-pounds. Now I'll put the caps in, line those up. Now we're going to tighten the axle nut. Get that started, but don't tighten it too tight. Then you want to take Put a couple of the lug studs in. We're going to take a pry bar. Just go in between. Prevent the hub from spinning when we tighten this down. Now there's a procedure to tightening this down. The first thing we're going to do is torque the nut to 148 foot-pounds. Now I'm moving the pry bar to the other side and we're going to loosen the nut half a turn. Now we're going to turn the hub half a turn. We can move these over. Then we'll torque the nut to 50 foot-pounds. And then you're going to go with a torque angle meter an additional 60 degrees. If you don't have a torque angle meter, do the best you can. There we go and take the studs out. Now I'll put the wheel on, line it up. Take the lug bolt, get that started. And the wheel lock with the key. Just 
tighten those down. Now we want to torque the lug bolts to 89 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Just go around again, double check. Take the key off, slide the center cap in place. And if you have that little cap, you want to put that on now. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.